Good morning, everybody. Cheers. I've been told I have to uh, slurp carefully because of the lapel mic, because everyone can hear it. How was that? Was that better? Less slurping? I hope so. Um, hey, everyone. Yeah, Michael just said it's, well, it's not warm. <laughs> it's just not cold outside. And um, I'm in a t-shirt. And so I've got the lapel mic hanging off my t-shirt, which doesn't work very well. I don't want it up here choking me, so um, this will be interesting. Let me know if it's loud enough, please. Um, what's um, uh, oh, AS, right, unexpected maker, ASMR. Okay, I got it. Wow, that was too many letters for me this early in the morning. Off work with, oh, no way. Really? Is that your first time getting it? Sorry to hear, Dave. Wow. Sorry, you had to put the volume down? Okay. Should have put in a hyphen. Oh, no, I got it. I, I said to... It looks like a dinosaur name. And, and anyway. <laughs> Sorry. It's really hot. I don't know how to drink a hot drink without slurping it. I apologize. So, hi everyone, how's it going? Um, uh, so before we do anything, I need to check a print last night. Um, I haven't looked yet, I'm getting it now. So I went to, I set up my, um, my RTC logging shield, my panels and went to pick and place it yesterday, first panel, and then went, oh, I haven't got a, um, a stencil printer vacuum plate for it. <laughs> Oops, I forgot about that. So I printed one last night, and I hope that it fits, because if it doesn't, I mean, big poo-poo. Oh, it fits. Oh, hang on. Mm, no, well, yes, okay. I can fix that. So, I don't know what's been going on with JLC recently, I'm not doing a JLC bashing uh, stream, but um, JLC, for some reason, are not cutting the edges of the panels, not this sides. Actually, this is bad as well. Um, when they're milling them, they're not straight. So there's bumps, it bumps along here, right? And on some of them, some of my boards, the bumps are like half a millimetre or more. And my tolerances are really tight on these to make sure that they sit perfectly flat and, and no air escapes. And um, I know what my tolerance on my printer is, it's point, point 0.38. Uh, so like, sorry, point 0.038. So I always give everything point 0.04 extra. Um, and yeah, it looks like on this edge just here, just there, it's, there's a bump, and it's just making it slightly out of tolerance just on that side just there. Anyway, I can fix that. I don't have to reprint it. Um, I can just take a knife to the section. But anyway, yay. So today, my plan is after my stream, sometime today, if I'm feeling energetic. I mean, it does fit. It goes in, but it gives it a slight bow, which gets pushed down when the vacuum happens. 
yeah, yeah. It just needs a tiny little. I just need to take the knife, um, just to the edge of the the three D print. Anyway, it, it like it goes in. It's fine. Um, I just don't like it when it bows slightly because then I have to put more pressure when I'm pasting, and I don't like putting. Um, if you put pressure when you're pasting, you can push paste through. Anyway, my plan today is to do the first run of my RTC logging shield. So that is exciting. Um, and I've got lots, lots of news to talk about. Uh, first, we should do... Uh, or I could sand the PCBs, but I don't really want to because um, sanding the PCBs is harder to get it flat when you're only trying to take off one side of a little bit of an edge and all the panels will be different. Uh, there's only 10 panels that I've got so far, that's fine. But um, I've noticed on all my panels recently, they're milling when they pull, when they cut the boards out of their main thing, their milling is just really inaccurate. Um, and on some panels, it's really bad. Like on my, um, my Tiny Pico UFL boards that I just built, that I just released, um, the panels on the back, so this section here, on an antenna end, like they, they, it was terrible. Like it was like this, you could really see it. It was um, those ones I had to sand down. It just makes FR4 mess everywhere. Um, want me to slap JLC PC with a rubber chicken? No, 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 no. It's look, it's it's fine. I don't whatever. I can I can work around it. It's just yep. Yeah. Um, I should have checked all the panels first before I. 3D printed that the panel the the plate just to make sure, but it's all fine. Um, okay, let's do a quick um, hello to everyone in the chat. F oh, I haven't started up. Sorry. So I had some logo problems. <laughs> um, I'll tell you about that in a moment as well. But I, so because of that, I didn't start up my the, the chat. Hang on. I'll do that now. Um, No, nope, that won't work. Stop it. No, nope, no, nope, I didn't change the... Oh, here we go. We're having a good day already. Um, I didn't change the stream ID. Also, I had an idea. I had an idea of something I want to try. Um, hang on. Uh, what's my stream ID? So with this way this Python script works, you, it can't, you can't pass it a channel and then say find whatever stream's running, you got to actually put the exact stream ID in, which means if I forget to change it, okay, this should work. Why is it telling me to insert an ad in YouTube? It's saying now would be a good time to insert an ad. Did YouTube turn ads on? Are people seeing ads? I'll take the chicken. Hey James, the chicken. The what? What chicken? Who? What did I miss? Chicken? Um, you got an ad at the beginning. Oh. Right, some people seeing ads, some people not. I'm not talking about the people who've got ads turned off. Oh, okay, I need to go through all of my settings to work out what... Hey Digicool. Yeah, I have to work out something's changed in my system settings. No, I haven't missed anything yet. Something's changed in my YouTube settings and ads have been put on by default, it looks like. I don't know what's going on yet. Okay, anyway, apologize for that. So, um, okay, let's have a say hi to folks in the chat. Um, and let's see if this is working though. Um, Okay, good. So the chat's working. It's, um, yeah, it's, well, no, it could be something I've missed. I did have a quick look after the stream last week and ads weren't on, so I don't know what's going on, but there might be a lower level setting that I'm missing. By the way, uh, just for Adam, I changed the title of the stream. You might have to refresh to see it. Respelt Laura correctly, and I even changed and updated the thumbnail because I don't want to offend anyone that I, yeah, I, but it's, I did actually do it incorrectly. It's it's 
lowercase o and a, and I should have done that. Okay, so, um, Joshua, hello. Um, first up this morning, uh, wagon loads, you were gone, but back again. Uh, Yumbo Prime, hello. Mr. England, Andy Mouse, Adam Bryant, hello. Uh, Johan, Mr. Explore, uh, Jishipu, meow, meow. Sorry if that was too loud. Um, David Dessa, hello. Dutch Taurus, good morning. Paul, hello. Two Pauls. Two Pauls, hello. Uh, Sergeant Bond, hi. Uh, Michael, yep, good morning. On this beautiful, hot, sunny day. It was actually so hot in here yesterday, I had to turn, like the heating I turned on in the morning to warm it up so I could reflow. Um, I turned the heater off pretty early in the morning and just the oven was keeping everything really hot. Like it was sweaty up here. <laughs> I almost had to put the air conditioning on. Um, okay, sorry for that little interlude. Uh, the Embedded Hobbyist, hello. Gary T, hi. AJ. Um, Grant, hello. Uh, John Meeking, hi. Alan Madsen. Mark, hello Mark. Less slurp, more gulp. Yeah, I can't when it's hot. I burn my mouth. Oh, you can hear the gulp? Don't tell me you can hear me gulping. That'd be really embarrassing. How am I supposed to drink it without gulping? Okay, that'd be really bad. So, Dave Paul Jones, hello, and you have, sounds like you've got COVID, uh-oh. Beata, hi. Um, Christian, hello. Graham Brown, hi, has anyone heard from John O? Um, yes, I have, I've been speaking to John. He's got a lot of family stuff on at the moment, so he's just not, he doesn't, doesn't have the headspace for streaming, um, yeah. Though I'm surprised he hasn't posted something publicly to let people know there won't be any streams for the time being. But yeah, I'm, I'm speaking to him regularly. So yeah, he's okay. He's okay. It's just uh, streaming takes a lot out. He just hasn't, hasn't had the, the focus to be able to talk about, you know, work and, and makery stuff. So he'd rather not put himself in that position to do that. Um, hello, Ray. Hey, Chris. Finally got rain. Yay. We've had a lot of rain here. We've had so much rain here that I have a roof leak. So over the weekend, we had torrential downpour. Like it was <laughs> insane amount of rain we had over the weekend, uh, three days straight. And I have a leak that comes down onto my stairs. And so I'm pretty sure it's around the area the air conditioning was put in. Uh, I've already spoken to the air conditioning guy. He's um, he grumbled, grumbled about the electricians. He, think he, he thinks he knows what, what they've done. Um, but he's going to have to fix it, not the Sparkies. So he'll take care of it, he said. It's all good. Um, so he'll be in this week. He needs to uh, find a time he can bring his big ladder because he's got to get up on the roof. Like He needs his eight-metre ladder, um, which he doesn't carry around with him all the time. But anyway, yeah. Um, okay, uh, Joe, hello. So I'm still going. Bruce, hi. Um, did you call things? Hello, James. Hello. Oh, it jumped. Mike Stegan. Hello, Eric. Laird. Hi. Dog boy. Woof. Don't know why I did that. Hope I didn't offend. <laughs> oh, well, I'm just inappropriate in the morning. What can I tell you? Um, no, no. The other end of the stairs. The server rack's not. It's yeah. It's the other end, which is good. Um, it's not gushing down, but it's uh, enough that it's discolouring the stairs, the wood on the stairs. Uh, Missed the drip loop and the standpipe for the power passage. Um, no, he thinks that they, um, to feed their wires in, because like, the air conditioning unit goes in, then the sparky comes to do the wiring, right? He thinks that they lifted up his, I can't remember what the word he used, but like his corking or whatever around it to feed the wire through rather than putting their own in. That's what he thinks they did, and they didn't reseal it properly. Um, but anyway, he'll be here this week. It's fine. No, no damage has been done. It's just that it's, um, yeah. <laughs> I was sitting here, and I, like, you know, I could hear something, and then um, I'll, as I walk down the stairs, there's this puddle so on the stair. Really hard to drink and not have you hear it. Abuse this Yes, that, that's what he thinks they did. I, I don't know. And until he gets up there, we won't know, but he's taking care of it. Um, what's wrong with Laura, apart from the look? 
Huh? What? I, I did it all capital letters because I wanted to stand out, but that's not actually the, the correct way you spell it is capital L, small o, capital R, small a for long range. It's an abbreviation. Well, yeah, anyway. Sorry, I'm slurping. I, I can't not do it. Anyway, okay, I've got news. Before we get into this, before we get into some PCB stuff, um, I've uh, been working hard. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, so I've got, firstly, I've got nanos back in stock. Tiny Pico nanos. As long as I don't burp. Okay, I'll try not to burp. I'm not normally a burper, not too much. But if I try to suppress my slurping, I might burp. Hey, Johnny. So um, after a long time, a very long time of not having... Tiny Pico Nanos in stock. I've got Tiny Pico Nanos in stock, which is pretty exciting. And uh, Hello Prince and uh, Pimeroni have got Nanos on the way, so they will also have them in stock. And possibly my Amazon resellers will have in stock at some point. I know they were keen to get their hands on some. Um, so yes, that's exciting. It's been a very long time since I've had Nanos because I haven't been able to get CP2104s. Um, and I got my hands on some at a, a really horrific price. <laughs> um, so I didn't buy a lot of them because I just I didn't want to double down on, on that price. But I bought enough that I could restock them for a while. So that's, that's the first thing, which is exciting. The second thing is I've got I2S Audio Shields back in stock. I made a whole bunch yesterday. Um, I, I had run out of panels and hadn't realised. Um, that's important because I had, there were people waiting for my RGB laser controller with the I2S Audio Shield pack. Um, have I ever done the slurp? I don't know what the slurp is. Um, I can't belch, when I, I can't intentionally burp. Yaz can, oh boy, she can just rip out some beauties, but I can't, I've never been able to, I'm not really a burper. It always happens unexpectedly. Anyway, so because I've got I2S Audio Shields back in stock, I've got those laser controller packs back in stock with I2S Audio Shields for those that were waiting. And what's even more important, I finished the demo code, porting the fork of the demo code for the laser controller, so there's actually code linked to on, um, let me show you, um, so the original code that I was using when I, that I did my chat stuff for, so it's on the, the main shop page down the bottom. There's a link. Is there any example code? And um, I thought I, cl I turned my mail off. What's beeping? That's really annoying. Anyway, so I'll put the link in just if anyone wants to take a look. So this is, oh, why has it gone to his? No, that's not right. Did I put the wrong link in? Okay, hang on one second. That's not the right link. Ignore that one. Oh, no. Um, okay, let me go back to here. Let me find mine. What just... <laughs> That's really funny. That's the one it's supposed to go to. Copy. Um, let me just fix this link. Have you seen the remaster? Oh, uh, are we are we doing? Um, I know what that is. You're going to rickroll me, aren't you? Okay, so let me just fix this. I need to fix this. I'm sorry. Because um, I don't. People are going to go to that other project, and it's not going to work. The code's not going to work. Oh, but I have to fix this on the back end of Squarespace, so I can't show you what I'm doing. I apologise. Because you will see all of my private information. Okay, that is the correct link. But it's remastered. Okay, open in a new, save, apply, save. Okay, um, Okay. so let's try that again. Let's try that again. So I've done, and this is the fork for it. 
and I've only done the laser show. I haven't done, I haven't looked at the laser spectrum analyzer code, but the laser code, the laser show code. So I've got his original stuff there, but I've added um, support for my controller for the RGB LEDs. It auto detects if you've got a tiny Pico, tiny S2 or tiny S3 plugged in. How cool is that? And then it, it automatically does the correct IO for you for the, to control the laser. So you don't have to do any changes to pin numbers. Um, and so what I've actually done is I've got it behind me. I'm going to turn it on. You're going to see, be able to see some of it. Some of it on the wall. It's set to big, big, you know, full width. Hopefully it'll work. So what I've done is I've taken his demo and I've added color to it and I've fixed up all the timing. I switched out his, he was using some driver that never worked for me properly. So I put the correct driver in and then, um, yeah, you can't see it all, unfortunately. But his whole demo works now and in color. Um, that one's always a weird one. I don't know what it, but that, that drawing is supposed to be, but anyway. Um, so he's got all, all the different things he can do on, in the code from spinning text, scrolling text, um, and there's also the 3D cube. I enabled the 3D cube in there as well. So anyone that wants to grab a laser controller um, can, yeah, the full demo of all of his code. Hey Richard. All right, I'm going to turn that off again. But I wanted to show that. Um, the instructors wrote, yeah, I know, but it's, uh, I, you can't see it, what it is properly, the way he's drawing it. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what, sorry, what I should have said was, I don't know what the demo of him drawing that was supposed to be showing in his code, right? I mean, he could have just drawn it, but he's not. He's, he's making it look like it's being drawn but it doesn't work very well with the laser because of the refresh rate and because it's so big. If you drew it smaller, it might look better. I don't know. Anyway, so that's live and, and folks are able to fork that if they want to do something more with it. But anyway, it's kind of important because I, I tend to get my hardware out before I get my firmware out <laughs> because I'm much more excited about the hardware. Um, and so I just wanted to let everyone know that there is fully working code in there. It's, it's checked, it's validated. Um, you can just literally download it. As long as you've got the same RGB logo, oh, RGB, logo RGB laser and, and stuff, it'll just work. And if you don't, if you've just got a single color laser, that's fine. Um, you'll just have to um, pull all the color parts out and tell it to only use the, uh, the first channel. Um, yeah, okay, so I think that's all the updated news. I think, yeah, okay. So we should talk about Laura. Uh, we should have a coffee first. Mm. We almost had no logo today, no RGB logo. I fixed it literally three minutes before the stream started. So I built my adapter and guess who built it? Guess who designed it wrong? <laughs> yes. Um, you can find my fault repository is text. No, it should be a link. Oh, I see what's happened. Hmm. Okay, hang on. But I don't understand why the... Okay, don't... Thing for Sion, don't edit your square page from the square page app because it doesn't seem to work properly. I did it on my iPad last night. Um, okay, I'm just going to get rid of that line and now you just need to click on the. So, yes, there is. Um, just click on the Delta Flow laser projector link. Uh, I'm just saving it. Just refresh that now. Maybe that'll work. Tell Laura I love her. Tell Laura I need her. Tell Laura not to cry. My lover will never die. Okay. <laughs> mm. 
This is very poetic. Hello, SDG Electronics. I went hunting on um, AliExpress again, looking for tweezers, looking for clone tweezers. There's still no clone tweezers, but you can actually buy, or they say they're original. You can buy original JBC tweezers on AliExpress now, but I still can't find a um, anyone that makes a, a unit that can do clones. So I, I don't really want to pay another three thousand dollars for another JBC nays for, for downstairs to have two. I really wanted to, you know, I thought downstairs I could just put, you know, an AliExpress special. Um, are you seeing the spectrum used by Laura getting filled by everyone and their nan? Um, I'm not doing a lot of Laura stuff myself uh, personally, although I've, I've got a helium. Um, Gateway at home, um, but I've um, I've never I haven't really played with Laura yet, but I know other people that are really interested in it, and I wouldn't mind playing a bit with it. So, um, I don't think the how full it is though is a problem. I would because it's Laura is not about like it's about short packet bursts, right? So. Apparently the A10 tweezers are supposed to be pretty good, but not found any JBC compliant clones yet. Are they, but, okay, do the Aten ones have, I need micro, like, at worst mini, but I, I really want, like, you know, micro or nano. Like, I, yeah, or actually, no, I don't want mini, I want either micro or nano. Um, I haven't seen any of that size, only the big ones. Unless you've seen something that I haven't seen. Um, it's like it looks looks like the quality of irons. Like quality, I, I can't judge, right? I mean, you can because you've reviewed a stack of them. But in terms of functionality and features, there's an amazing range of, of fancy irons now on AliExpress that are all, you know, JBC style. Um, they look really, really good. Um, okay, they're not as small. They're like the Weller ones. Okay, yeah, I really need small. Like even I'm finding my Nano ones are too big. Um, for some of the things I want to do, they're just, they're, you know, even the, the smallest, the smallest, I think, I don't know what they're called, chisel, paddly type shape ones, the smallest tips I can get for them are still too thick to get into some of the sections I need to get into. Um, I wish they made even smaller ones again. So, you know, I've got small hands, so I can do little tiny ones. What I need is ones that attach to my fingers like this, you know, like little tweezers. Like if I could get, um, I don't know my tweezers are, if I could get mine as small as my tweezers, that'd be great. Okay, let's stop rambling on this. So I got this wrong. I, um, it, it, it's right, except I forgot that on this version of the logo, I flipped the board around so the antenna was on top, not on the bottom, like my original logo. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a, um, a problem because this was designed to go this way, where it plugs into where the tiny Pico was, and then the I can put a tiny Pico there and an audio shield, I2S audio shield there, and it sits down the the logo, but it actually, <laughs> it goes like that and it sticks out the top of the logo. Whoops. Oh well. So uh, back to the drawing board on that one. Um, well, a micro pencil is the smallest I can think of. I don't know how small that is, but I've not seen tweezers smaller than my my nano ones on the nays. Um, you made your first purchase. Oh, well done! Congratulations. It's uh, addictive. Be very careful. Okay, let's talk about Laura. So I um, ages ago, in preparation for playing with Laura, I mean, guess guess who never got around to it. Um, I bought myself a bunch of Laura stuff. So I got myself a Laura E5 Mini from Seed. Um, and I got myself one of the um, the Grove versions of it. Both of them are using the E5. And the reason I did that, uh, there, there are a lot of options out there for Laura. I uh, can you use, no, it's 915. I, I don't think we can use the 868. Um, so it's really, it's. I don't know how it all gets policed. Like at the end of the day, 
I don't know what's stopping anyone from firing up a a gateway that's running at 868 and then allowing people to attack. Mike will know. Hello, Mike. Mike, what's stopping someone from just firing up an 868 megahertz gateway here and then using an 868 LoRa device to communicate with it? Uh, well, announcement SDG WX Smart supporting IoT. Oh no, well have done an IoT based iron. Tell me they're going to uh, lock you out if you don't. Anyway, okay, whatever. Um, ACMA will come knocking. Right, okay, that's the only thing, right? So it, it's a. Assuming someone's actually monitoring it. Oh, right, okay, yeah, right. I don't know if I can open the wire chat in a separate window with the feed on one screen and the video on another. Yeah, I think you can, there's a little, there should be, a, isn't there a dot, 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 you can pull it out? If this is equal, another down under, please. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just curious to know, N not the legalities, just whether it would work, like whether there's, there's, okay, anyway. So I got those, I got myself a, a couple of antennas like this, these are all SMA. And I got myself some different antennas. Uh, they're the same, and then that's, I think that one came with, with that. So a bunch of stuff, and while I was at it, I got myself a bag of the sideways SMA connectors. Oh, interesting. There's a bag in a bag. I got myself a bunch of SMA connectors. The sideways ones that you can attach to the board, kind of like what, how these are attached. Oh, there's also an antenna in there. Lots of antennas. I'm not going to run out of antennas anytime soon. Um, so they go on the PCB sideways. You get a hand solder, top and bottom, on the pads. So, I don't know if that's their exact intended use, but that's how people use them. Just a few, and some of you might remember I bought myself a uh, 100 of the E5 modules. So these modules here that I bought on tape, and they sent them individually, and they basically told me to sod off about it. They said, bad luck. It was a bit frustrating. So I got all this stuff with the intent of playing with Laura when I got my Helium gateway. And then around about the same time, I decided I was gonna move. <laughs> and the move was all encompassing. And I ended up not doing anything with my Laura devices, much to Mike's dismay, because he was also doing stuff with Laura at the time. And he kept sending me snippets of code and stuff, and I kept doing nothing with it. Um, yeah, I don't want the Optus or Vodafone police coming to me. Anyway, I'll be doing it properly. So, with LoRa, so like, okay, so Wi-Fi is super chat, crazy boy, and I saw that pop up before the sound happened, and I didn't have a heart attack this time. Thanks, crazy boy. Woohoo! Thank you very much for the super chat. Yay! Look at the logo. So with Wi-Fi, for instance, is 2.4, 2.45 gigahertz, right? That is the, the frequency that everyone uses for the Wi-Fi standard. That's however that gets registered. With um, LoRa, it's a little bit different, different countries, because they're limited on, um, on, on frequencies, wavelengths, and people using stuff and, and whatever. Different regions have got different frequencies allotted for LoRa use. It's like super. Is it Christmas? Oh. Says eight million two hundred and eighteen thousand five hundred and two seconds into Christmas. Where do you find that out from? Hey James, how you doing? Hey NerdWorks. Guess who? Is that there? Fuzz. Fuzz? What? That's a uh, bit Looney's voice. 
Um, Is it Christmas? It says my head. I love calculations and maths. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that's, that's insane. So, yeah, so with Laura, because it's at the lower end of the spectrum, different countries have allotted different frequencies for Laura use. And so it's, some regions are 433 megahertz, um, some are obviously 868 in Australia, and a couple of other places we are um, 915, I think. Um, I can add 79 to 20. I don't know. Is it I Christmas? Add. Says am I a nerd? Oh, I wish it could be Christmas every day. Let the bells ring out for Christmas. Yeah, Christmas is, I don't know. I don't enjoy Christmas. Sorry. I mean, I don't celebrate Christmas, but I don't enjoy it. Shops close. Um, it's the same recycled shows on TV. So Australia is 9.15 to 9.28. Okay. says bar humbug. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, a different impression of that workroom now. I've been there and can picture the layout in my head. Yeah, except it's cleaner now. James, it doesn't, it's not as messy as it was when you were here. Although the couch is still full. I've still got to sort out stuff on the couch. But it's, um, so you can't use a US, yeah, I know, I know. Anyway, so my plan was always to make, like it was to play with these lower devices, but was to make a, a shield for the tiny, uh, tiny X range. When I say tiny Pico, I mean tiny Pico, tiny S2, tiny S3. Um, and I started working on it, but I got stuck the other week and I put it in, so I've got a channel in my Discord for it. Um, I was stuck with what to do with an antenna and or onboard um, antenna. External antenna, onboard antenna. If it was an external antenna, what type of external antenna? And I did a poll on Twitter and uh, UFL definitely won over SMA. But I think SMA is better. It's, it's more rugged. Um, and it will last longer in terms of putting antennas on and off. Um, let me show you what I've done so far. This is the most impressive nipple test microphone you own. Nipple tassel. It's, well, it's got the little fuzzy, th hairy thing on it, which make, apparently makes it sound better. I don't know. Not always talking to you, just writing to the general public. Oh, right, okay. Sorry, Mark. I just think you're always talking to me. This makes it better for prototype boards. Um, yeah, because people are going to take things on and off and on and off. Like, someone said to me on on the Twitter chat, or was it on... Yeah, it was on the Twitter chat for the poll. Um, they prefer UFL, but they often take their antennas on and off. And I was thinking to myself, why would you do that? Like, if you had a UFL connector on a board, um, and you were using that board in a project... Like, antennas aren't that expensive. Like, why would you be pulling the antenna off to use it somewhere else? Uh, oh, Joshua's back. Hello, Joshua. Hello. Um, I said hi to you before when I did the roll call. Um, I said hi to you first, but you weren't here. Oh, exotic geek, hello. Yeah, UFL is smaller, but it's also got less mating cycles. It's more fragile, easy to damage. So, like, I was curious to know why you'd... If you put an antenna on, why would you... Like, he said he regularly takes his antennas off and moves them around. And I didn't understand why you would do that. Obviously, it's much smaller. Um, and you can get smaller antennas, external antennas. We just stopped using SMA as our default RF connector now. Yeah, so what are you using now, though? Are you using UFL? Oh, right, you're using SMA, not UFL. Right, okay. So what I did was, like, I've been designing the board. Um, well, I started a designing board and got stuck on the antenna bit, <laughs> of course, as you do. Um, I've got just a, a tiny, uh, that's a tiny S3, just here as reference to the size. Because it's going to come down to, will the shield plug into a tiny Pico, like... Is it stackable? If it's stackable, the antenna has to be on the USB side, not on the other side, or they're going to interfere with the Wi-Fi. Um, and 
Or is it going to be, do I make a board that the a Tiny Pico plugs into, so it's a bigger board, then it's not so much of a problem, but then the end result is bigger. Or I don't have to worry about that if I don't put a, an SMA connector on. If I just put a UFL connector, then, you know, I mean, I can make the board even smaller. And then I thought to myself, well, hang on, you know, what about, what about having multiple options? And I personally don't like um, when you get a, a board or something and there's like two options for an antenna or whatever and it's a resistor that you have to move because the resistor is going to be an 0402 resistor and not everyone is capable of resoldering, like removing and changing an 0402 resistor, right, in two different directions to be able to choose which antenna. And it makes it even compounded more when it's a very small board and not only is a 0402 resistor, but there are a lot of other components around it that you can easily knock or damage with an iron. Not everyone's got tweezers, right? Um, and plus there's also the, the fact that you need to match them with the resistor in place to be able to compensate for that zero ohm resistor. Because there's no such thing as a zero ohm resistor. Like There's resistance on it. Um, and just the solder, it's not so much the resistance, but just by having the pads and putting the resistor down, you're adding inductance to the board. Like it, it affects things a lot. Potentially affect things. Uh, how about auto antenna option configure the order time? Um, no, Alex. Hi, Alex, by the way. That means I have to make multiple versions of the board, which I'm not going to do. It's not, it's not even cost effective for me to make a single design at the moment. Like the modules are nine dollars us each just that cost me for the module um yeah zero ohms five percent right <laughs> um oh, but it's not five percent of zero that's the problem but it's not the resistance that's the issue it's the additional capacitance inductance on the board which changes your matching um so yeah, for me to turn around and then have to make multiple SKUs of the board with different antennas is a problem. So my other option is to stick an RF switch on there, which I've been looking into. Um, and that way people can digitally change which antenna via an IO pin. So I could put, for instance, an SMA connector and an onboard antenna, or I could put an SMA connector and a UFL connector or whatever, all the different combinations with a, an RF switch <coughs> Excuse me, but that increases cost, increases size a little bit, and makes tuning much harder. Um, so I'm not sure I want to go down that road. Um, plus, there's the issue of it is possible to damage an RF switch if you try to activate, for instance, an external antenna, but don't have an antenna plugged in. Now, BNC is way too big. BNC is massive. A BNC connector is almost the size of the PCB. So no, that's not going to work. It's going to be SMA, which is the biggest. Um, so that's the SMA connector. That's an SMA connector here. All right, That's the biggest I would put on the board. But if you look at, here's the size of a tiny Pico. Right, that's the whole size of a tiny Pico. That's you know that's a pretty big antenna connector. So I kind of got stuck on I don't want to I'm not trying to make a board that works for everyone because again it's impossible I can't do that. So I want to come up with the best option. I, I want to at least validate that the board works. Um, and obviously I've got a stack of SMA based antennas here. So for me, it would make sense to have an SMA connector on there, at least for testing. Plus, I have all the connectors. But I've got stacks of UFL connectors as well. Uh, I've got a reel of them. So it doesn't really matter what I put on there. Hey, JF. Um, I just have to kind of pick a direction and go for it. Uh, speaking from experience, lawyer developer, if people are making something with an external antenna, 
they should connect with SMA if they want more compact solution, then, then what? Hey, Illuminator. <laughs> N-type. <laughs> uh, no, I'm pretty sure I can't fit that on my board. Does everyone know how big an N-type is here? Yeah. Or type N? It's funny. Is it N-type or type N? Anyway. <laughs> that. This is an N-type, everyone. Just so you, you know. So there's a <laughs> there's the size of my board. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can't fit that. I could fit, I can fit a board inside. Look at that. I can fit it inside the connector. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen. The one with the pin in the end. What? Hey, Mechatronica made. Hello, hello. Um, Elix Crucial is great. Uh, you should make one with a PCB antenna. Yeah, so again, a PCB antenna is bigger than my board. Um, a PCB antenna is, the, the smallest I've found is about this big. So that's a little big for my board. Well, that's what we're discussing, um, JF. Um, not everyone wants UFL. UFL got voted as the highest, but only like 58 people voted. I don't know what you mean by solar state. There's RF switches, but they're, you know, an RF switch is going to cost me $1.50 US to put on the board. And then the complexities of designing for it, getting it working, and then what happens if someone tries to like you, you can you can blow an RF switch if you enable or you depending on the switch, but it, it's 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 not uncommon to damage switches if you don't have an antenna and you switch it. Right, and the option is you can go UFL to SMA, although that is going to impact the matching on it. But yes, you can. Hey, Mad Techie. Right. Uh, SMT, SMA is fragile. I don't think it's any more fragile than a UFL connector, personally. Um, what's a PL259? Hey, Idirian, by the way. Hello. And Mitchell R. Hello. It'll fit perfectly. <laughs> um, more talk to the board. There shouldn't be any talk to the board if you're attaching it correctly, but people don't. They they twist it on rather than, yeah. But but yes, uh, Adfruit V2 with UFL antenna connector, also bought UFL antenna, to, to push the connector antenna onto the UF. Right, it's, it is, it's not, you know, not necessarily easy to get the antenna on with a UFL um, and to get it back off again, especially if you've got big fingers. Um, but yeah, it's, oh, it's a bad UHF connector. Okay, right. Hey, Simon, my opinion, your field SMA adapters are very cheap. So if someone needs SMA, it's pretty, right. There's something like the, what is, I don't know what that C718, what is that mark before I look it up? Complex massive URL is shadowed by the small resetting count. It's a dead board. Which one would expect many antenna changes? Well, I don't know. Would it expect many antenna changes? Wouldn't you just put your antenna on and leave it on? The two antenna options, no switch and no consideration for tuning. Um, yeah, I know it's an LC LCSC code. What is it though? I'm asking you what it is know what the code is, what, what it actually is. Um, okay, the other thing I was going to do on the board was to stick um, at least one I2C, like a stem QT connector on it as well. I figure that if people are going to do LoRa, they're going to want to have sensors connector. It's an antenna, right. Well, okay, so the other option is onboard antennas, and I've been looking at that. 
but I know you won't like it. Well, I've already, I've already found some antennas I can use. Um, LCSC. And I, I would use a, a wideband antenna. Yeah, no, I'm not doing one of those. <laughs> um, yeah. Not really a fan. Um, and on a, a one millimeter thick PCB, even with extra plating, people are just going to rip that rip that off and damage the board. What about an electronic auto detect antenna switch? I just been to well. There is no auto detect antenna. Well, I don't know what you mean by auto detect. I, I spoke about putting an RF switch on there, right? And I said RF switch is going to cost another dollar fifty US to stick on a board plus more space and have the added issue potentially of people damaging them. Uh, you know, please, so we can put the board in a box. Right. So I definitely want to have an external antenna on here. I think the one quarter wave. Well, I'm not doing 433. That's the other problem. This I'll be designing this for 915. I the only way I'm going to be, well, ah, <sighs> yeah. So will the, now let's go to Seed. Seed Studio. Let's go to the E5 module. Why not 2.4? So, so this particular chip, does eight six eight nine fifteen. EU, US 915, it doesn't do 433. Who uses 433? No, uh, so Ignean don't have a specific antenna for this frequency, but they've got wide band antennas that'll do this frequency and more. Four three three is in China, and Alex is saying in Americas. Right. Well, this is saying EU eight six eight, US nine fifteen, AU nine fifteen, Asia nine twenty three, KR nine twenty, and India eight six five. So I don't have to worry about four three three because the chip can't do it. Yeah, I know. Bruce keeps keeps pointing to the uh, linking. Thanks, Bruce. The the things network. They they go. Over, they've got a lot of detailed info on Laura. Um, right. Here's all the different bands. So everywhere that's got four three three also has a higher frequency. Okay. So I just don't need to worry about four three three. Okay. Good to know. So, okay, so I just, uh, I need an antenna option that'll just do that wide range. So as I said, Ignean have, um, they are not cheap. Ignean, oh my God, can't spell. Mm -mm. Can, you can import my antenna. I sent in Discord. Um, okay, hang on. Uh, uh, let me 
just, uh, Mark wants to see what this antenna looks like. It's going to be big. What frequency is it set for, out of curiosity? Um, let me just add this uh, place, add footprint. Yes, lots of, yes, go away. Um, what do you call it? Antenna, PCB. Why is it no, why is it not there? Hmm. What version of KiCad is that from? Right, Matiki, that's fine for people who want a, an external antenna, absolutely, but not everyone wants an external antenna. Um, okay, that won't work, I don't believe. I'm on six, so I don't think that's compatible. They're not compatible, I don't believe. Um, to play around with the Heltex Wi-Fi Laura 32 board, and I must say that the pigtail with Eurofell SMA is pretty annoying. I'd prefer to have an SMA socket on the board. Yeah, so that's the thing, right? I can't please everyone. No, no, I, I definitely want to have an external antenna. The question is, do I want to have an external antenna just of one type? Do I want to give people the option of two external antennas or give people the option of an external and an onboard? So, and this is, this is problematic because I don't want to make multiple SKUs, at least to start with. Um, so I need to do something like this. Um, oh, hang on. Okay, let's go here. Their, their website's a bit annoying to do it, but I want Laura apply. Right, the run extent. There's only one antenna that they do, right? And what it is, it's a wide band antenna. So it works from 698 to 8 gigahertz. Okay? <laughs> um, well, and it says best for 824 to 5.8 gigahertz. There's another chip antenna. Okay, I'll, hello, DJ. I don't even have, I'm not going to pronounce that because I'm going to get it wrong. Um, yeah, I've looked at that one already, the link one. Um, Yep, as you can see here, I've already been looking at it. So, I mean, these aren't overly cheap, but they're much cheaper than these. Um, and they're a bit smaller, except the range on these is too, too narrow. So this is for a 915, so it does 902 to 930. I can't use that. People can't use that for an 866. Um, I don't know how big it is. I'm about to look at the size of the... It looks small, but it might not be. See, the frequency range is not great. So it doesn't really help me. And I don't want to do two different versions. Um, and... Where's the size? 13, it's 13 millimeters. Wow, that is huge. Well, yeah, that would not really fit. That'd be touching my header pins. Add a Kikat 6 version of Nintendo in Discord now. Okay. Let me try that one. And they've come to collect the uh, rubbish. Wow, can everyone hear that? 
someone's bin is being emptied. There we go. It loaded that one. Oh yeah, I've, I've looked at this one already. Yeah, look at that. Deep I mean, that's rubbish. Yeah, it is rubbish. So look at the size of that antenna. I mean, that's pretty big. Those data fruit feathers are lower quite a bit. They don't populate the UFL on the board, so you have to do it yourself. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would never ask someone to put a UFL connector on themselves, Kenny. Uh, I think. I mean, they're too small, and um, and the pro again, you get someone to do it themselves with a soldering iron, and there is no way they're not going to affect the uh, Im impedance of the uh, connection. Like all you need is a, a slightly too big a blob of solder, and you've you've wrecked your any any, and you can't match with it other either, right? Um, antenna jack type, if you can have a couple of holes on your board that will allow one to use a small cable tie to put over the small. Yeah, there won't be any room for any holes on the board to do that. That's why I said I can't use a PCB antenna. That's the smallest PCB antenna I found. I found bigger. No snap off. There's no such thing as snap off. can't do a snap off. Snap off doesn't work. Like you can't, anyway, you can't snap off the thing that has to be permanently on the board. Um, like a PCB antenna has to be, yeah, okay, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> not even going there. So we're back to, at worst, it just has to have an external antenna with no onboard antenna, which is very common, which is totally fine. Um, there's no, I'm not doing snap off, Magicky. Never gonna happen. So I just need to decide, like I, I could fit two antennas on the board, depending on what else I wanna add. Okay, if I wanna add, you know, at least one stemmer connector, and I wanna add, you know, if I wanna put UFL in, then I have to decide how I'm gonna switch between the two. I mean, you could have a UFL and SMA footprint on the board and only populate one. Dr. Nick says, do these E5 boards have a DC-DC converter? Do, what do you mean, what E5 boards? The E5 is a module. What do you mean, Dr. Nick? Will my board have one? No. So I'm, I don't know what you mean or what specifically you're asking. Um, no, I will not ship a board where the user has to decide what antenna they want and have to solder it on themselves. That's never going to happen. That is a uh, very bad customer experience. Sorry. Um, okay, hang on. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. What am I looking for? Let me just go and grab my UFL. Connector. Can't remember which one I used. Ba -ba -ba -ba. That one. Okay. So there's my UFL. This is my standard. This is all. This is the one I used on my Tiny Pico UFL version, V3 UFL. Um, so not only would this have to get on, put on the board, right? but it would have to be far enough away from the SMA connector if there was both and a switch of some type to be able to get your fingers in there to actually plug it on or not, which means I'd have to extend the, the size of the board by a considerable amount to be able to do that. Like probably even that is not enough to let people get their fingers in to plug it in and to and also to get it back out again. So will you sell antennas with it? Um, no, no, you'll be providing your own antenna. Uh, I'm not getting into the buying and selling antenna business. Um, Semtech has a special section about power on their chips. Just LDO, DC, buck. Okay, 
what's uh, what's Semtech got to do with this? Um, I mean, there's no like the power regulation for this shield is coming from the Tiny Pico, Tiny S2, Tiny S3. I, I know I can't please everyone, but but S, uh, but UFL was asked for way over than SMA, like. Oh, inside the module. I don't know, you'll have to have a look at, um, I don't know, I mean, let's, what do they say? I can't do much about what's inside the module. Um, Ah, okay, Mark, thank you for explaining that. Um, oh, okay. I've done a photo there. I just want to see if there's any um, schematic for it. Oh, wow, they've got a... Um, Mike's found a photo. Hopefully, that's not going to get rickrolled. Okay, not very big the photo. Okay. Anyway, this will be fed off 3.3 volts from the, the tiny board. Um, I have no idea internally what that's going to do with that power. Um, it's okay, I don't need to see inside. That's fine. I'd vote for SMA. I've not had a lot of luck with UFL. Big fingers. Right. That's... And then I also have to look at this, to be honest. Right. Of all the people that would say, I want one way or another way, right, how many of those people... I don't, it's fine, but how many of those people are actually going to buy one or use one? Right? So, <laughs> you know... It's, yeah. Provide a tutorial on how to use UFL. Mm. Um. Because then I, I limit which other people can use it, Bruce. Like I, I limit my marketplace by shrinking down the frequency range. No, I'm not including any adapters. That's, that's, if I put a UFL connector on the board, it's up to someone else if they want to put something else on there. <laughs> Using UFL means more sales when people inevitably break it. Like, it's not like my fault if they break the UFL connector. The UFL's pretty standard, right? No, I'm, I'm, I'm using the E5 module. I'm not doing my own. Um, firstly, I can't get chips from uh, STM. And secondly, uh, I'm, that's, no. My, th this is gonna, I'm just doing this with an E5 module. I've already bought them. I'm going to make a, a bunch of these. Um, so, you know, and maybe look. <sighs> I've got 100 E5 modules. Maybe I just make 50 of each, 50 UFL and 50 SMA, and see which ones sell. And I, 
I didn't really want to do that. Um, plus the SMA connectors I have to hand solder on myself and it means that I have to make a two millimeter thick PCB to fit them. Um, so we get to buy two of each. Yeah, I'm using USB-C for everything now, why? Why do you ask, Quixotic? I'm breaking out the STM32 programming pins. We'll just keep them running. Just going to keep them running as AT stock firmware. It's a LoRa board. It's not a microcontroller board. USB-C antenna? What? Oh, USB-C to SMA adapter. Can you get those? What? The pad on... No, the pads for SMA and URFL are totally different. How can they accept both? I mean, that's the SMA pads. That's the URFL pads. How does that work? You want me to squeeze that in there like that? Was that is that the plan? Well, that's not going to work, but anyway, but... Um, USB C to SMA sarcastic, at least I hope. Okay, this is pretty much the standard from what I've seen. If I go with the UFL. Ah, yeah. Thanks, Quixotic. Yeah. Ah, folks. So if I was going to put both, how am I going to switch it? Hmm? How would I switch? See, we started Quixotic Geek, 50 ohm USB-C connectors. You connect it with four pads. Yeah, I've got it. It's a four pad connector. Yeah, I wouldn't do the three pad ones. You'd rip it off. Oh, no way. They did the three pin and they did the wrong way around. The universal PCB pad. Tony saying the universal PCB pad, the outer two ground pads step in near the edge of the board. Outer two pads step in near the edge. Huh? I'm confused. You need to draw me a picture. If I was to this is slightly bigger, would fit a feather form factor, not a tiny. Oh, hello, John. John Ox is here. Uh, I had some folks asking about you, or someone asking about you earlier. Um, I said that you are okay, just not streaming at the moment. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in paralysis, yes, <laughs> on this, because the, it's really split. Like the use this or use that, like it's really divided. And, um, and doing both puts me down a, how do I switch them? How do I let users switch them? path that I don't really like any solution for. Um, I don't like the um, the moving the resistor and if you use solder jumpers like on the back of the board that completely damages the matching, RF matching. Only here briefly, that's okay, thanks for stopping in to say hi. Um, Ooh, going to be streaming next week, hopefully. Excellent. Yes, many, many of us have missed your streams. But, you know, take as much time as you need, mate. Um, send a photo to Discord. And Mark also sent a photo. What's that photo, Mark? Mark sent this photo. 
is that there? <laughs> dirt board, I don't know. Um, and hang on, who else sent one a? Okay, Mr. England sent one as well. Oh, right, okay. Um, actually, I'll open the original. Yay for focus photo. Um, right, so on the, wait, what the? What are these pads here? What is that? Pad two is L-shaped in a very narrow gap between pin one and pin two. Right, I wouldn't, that's the thing, Kenny, I wouldn't have thought that people who are using a UFL connector would be plugging in and unplugging it that often. Right, the cost of a UFL connector, a UFL antenna would be, I'd have to, I'd have to guess, no more expensive than the cost of, a, of the board and you just leave it on there. SMA join to UFL. Oh God. Solder two pad, solder pad two way jumper to choose which antenna. Yeah, but that's, that wrecks, again, you get a user to add solder to bridge and that completely destroys your matching. And, and people can't use, can't resolder 0402 generally. Most people can't. And this is spark fun. What are we looking on here for? Oh, check how many are using SMA. That's SMA. SMA. I don't know, it's really hard to see. SMA, SMA. Yeah, mostly using SMA. We don't care about matching, okay. SMA on the other, and a disclaimer that users are not be stupid and try to use both. <laughs> Yeah, disclaimers, they work really well. Good reason to make something different, sure. Ah. I don't even have a, a, a UFL antenna. Anyone know a good, a good reasonable not from AliExpress UFL based LoRa antenna. I'd have to buy one to try with. I can't fit a PCB one, not gonna work. But I can fit a, a, a chip antenna, like I can fit the Ignean. The problem with the Ignean is it's not easy to match because of its range. So it's gonna rely on yeah. There are tons on Mauser Digikey. Yeah, I know that's the problem. There are tons. So which which way to go? So this is twelve by three. So I mean this will take up the whole pretty much end of the board, but it will fit inside. Right, that's twelve. It'll fit inside my header pins. But you know, they're also expensive, quite expensive. Um and then 02224, I was actually, I already looked that one up. Um, and then 02, oh God, is that an N? That's not an N. And then 02224. There, like, no, that's the, um, Yeah, I mean, they're $4 each in quantity of a 1,000. <laughs> they're rather expensive. But I could use these for Wi-Fi as well. I could use these all the way up to 5G 
F sorry, five gigahertz. Okay, we'll have five, four, five antennas. Hey, Aaron. Works for LoRa and 4G also. Why do you always do? <laughs> Can't you give me a, a US? Or just give me the code. What's the code? Mark? Dummy load will also match all the way to five. Okay, but this is this antenna will actually work at five gigahertz. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Oh my god, you guys <laughs> and girls. You humans. Um A board antenna won't be useless. No, it, it won't be useless. Like, it really depends on what you're doing. Like, f okay, you wouldn't use a board antenna with a, a, it's sitting in a box out in the countryside needing to go two kilometers in range. That is huge. Why is it so big? That's not a UFL, is that a UFL? Can't tell from that picture. Okay, maybe it's not that big. It looks massive. Oh, it's an IPEX, yeah, okay, yep. Uh, both antennas are dipoles, so there's no gain anyway. People are gonna want to put them outside, which means rugged boxes, often metal, excellent. Oh no, I, 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 it has to have an external antenna. Yes, yes. I, I never said I was gonna make a board only with an, with an onboard antenna. I didn't say that. <laughs> what I said was a solution with an onboard antenna and an external antenna, in my mind, would be ideal because, you know, like, if I used a board here with an internal antenna, I could still easily get to my house with it. Like I, it's, it's, I don't need 45 kilometers or whatever the, the maximum thing is, right? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. But for, for most people would want to then, if they put in a box or whatever else, sure, an external antenna. But that still leaves the problem of a switch. So, Finding a switch that is, actually, oh, well, I did find one, um, except the link is at home. What is that link? No, I've got, I've got a reel of UFLs and I've got a whole bunch of SMA and that is, um, six. Oh, this is really small. How much is this going to cost? Kai, Sira, don't they make printers? Sorry, was that a bad joke? Um, uh, let's go to that and let's see if DigiKey have them. Oh, it's not too bad actually. There we go. A dollar eighty. But I'd, I'd then I'd still need an RF switch, right? And so I'm looking at definitely a Skyworks, and I need to. Active, in stock, <laughs> 88. <coughs> um, and I want, what? Hmm. Frequency range. It's going to have to be a wide band switch. And it's going to have to be, well, let's, let's go the other way around. Let's go. Well, 
Where's my button type? Oh, I was on Mauser. <clears throat> so this doesn't give me the option to choose the, um, the switch type, which is really frustrating. Oh no, there it is. Okay. It's, so I, want, I need single pole, double throw. Fifty-one. Hey Tony, important that chip antenna won't have enough ground plane on your tiny board. Yeah, it'll probably need a massive ground plane. I know, I know, but n neither will the Ignean. So that's also a problem. Okay, so what's it? The five, three, three, five, four. I think this is the one I was looking at. I think. Yeah, the Ignan needs a massive ground plane as well. wasn't the one I was looking at. Uh, there were so many different SKUs. Oh, I wish I would have saved the link. That's really annoying. You feel connected to another PCB with the chip antenna on it. Okay, so with the UFL connector, it's people can stick a UFL antenna on, or they can put a pigtail, a UFL to SMA connector, right? Well, create a poll, ask a question. Okay, antenna. Okay, external antenna choice. No preference. This is going to be SMA and this is going to be U.FL. Okay, here we go. We're doing a vote. Ask your community. You can switch antennas with two diodes. What do you mean by switching with two diodes? Mark's already voted 10 times. There is no both option. Both option means that I then have to solve the issue of switching, which I can't easily solve. TV where people kept coming up with magic tiny antennas to replace big ugly dishes. So SMA is 55. Why is that not, is that not updating? Why is the thing still on the screen there? Super chat! <laughs> Okay, Mike, Mike's, Mike's voting with his money. Thanks, Mike. Um, why on the stream, though, is it sh not showing it correctly? That's annoying. It hasn't updated it. And it's got the thing stuck on there still. But, um... I was going to make a say on Pix antenna. Top gear boy. <laughs> yes, you can use an SMA to bulkhead cable internally. Yeah, but I can't vote on that window. So yeah, that's interesting why it's doing that. But okay, yep, yeah, nothing I can do. Uh, I have no idea wagon loads. SMA is definitely winning, which is interesting because UFL won the Twitter vote.
yeah, the, on, on the stream capture, it's it's just a capture of that browser window. It doesn't do a, yeah, I don't, it, yeah, it's not great. So if we're switching RF with pin diodes. Switching RF with, whoops, pin diodes. Um, easy to connect to my point one amp. This one with a long neck will make it easier to fit into a 3D printed case. I don't, well, I don't have a long neck version. Um, Yeah, okay, this is too much for me to fit into my head this morning. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so how many, I can't, can I see how many votes? I can't see how many votes there've been. Um, Thirty-three votes so far. Okay, thanks. Thirty-three votes. Okay, sixty-five percent SMA. Right, but SMA also still does fit. Like it, like. That's why I, I did this, right? Like I can definitely get an SMA connector. On this, on here. It has to go over the USB side. SMA milk, what? Catch a lot of Mr. Explore. Yeah, it is a major political debate, isn't it? I don't really want to stick a switch on there, as I said. A switch is is costly and problematic, but both footprints and load 50-50. I wouldn't do both footprints and load, well that would be two different boards. I'd like to avoid two different boards if I can. Super chat! Hey Jack McMack, thank you for that super chat. Just dropping by. Well, quickly vote. You got to vote. No user solderable. Mm, no. I won't be shipping boards out that the user has to solder their own connectors on, their own antenna connectors. Sorry, Nathaniel. Like that's again, as I said earlier, that's a terrible user experience. Um, is a brand of baby milk in the UK? I didn't know that. Pineapple on pizza, 100% definitely. Uh, we already did the end type. No, too slow on that one. How big is the antenna footprint built in for SMA AMFOL? Vertical. Vertical? Ugh. I, I don't want to do a vertical antenna. 
Um, I really don't want, yeah, but okay, I'll have a look. So what is it? Um, SMA MFOL 901.44. That's pretty big. I don't really like the idea of a vertical SMA connector. Um, firstly, I, I've already got the sideways ones, but they're just, they're just going to get ripped off the board. Like people are yeah, going to just they're just going to rip them off the board, hundred percent. That's not the right one. That's the one you just told me, wasn't it? Try that again, add footprint. Oh, did I choose the wrong, right? I chose the right. Oh, that's through hole. No, 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 no. No, no, no through hole. Why am I doing through hole? Support deck. <laughs> Maybe a superstition, but could the antenna break out not be a hat for this board with the different versions? So it's gonna be a shield that has a hat. And yeah, not really, <laughs> Aaron. Um, Morning from Newcastle. Hey, Liam. Minus one thousand on pineapple. No pineapple on pizza all the time. It works. It's great. I love it. I don't know what an MM eight through is. What is that? Is that an antenna? I don't. I don't know what that is. What type of connector is that? Pineapple and fruit salad only. <laughs> what? What is this? SWF. What's SWF? Hey, Bob. How you doing, mate? What is it, SWF? Let's not add an extra one into it. Yes, it's it's um, not just gentlemen here though, Bob. Uh, knowledge is knowing that tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in your fruit salad. Oh, let's not let's be careful not to offend Bob. Please. Yeah, let's let's not let's, can we not let's not do this. Everyone is welcome here. Everyone. Okay, we're not doing that one. Not doing that connector. <laughs> we'll go three point five and win a jack. Just RCA. Let's just go RCA all over the board. We can do that. Okay, I think so. SMA, it's dropping, it's now 58%. <laughs> XLR. Ah. <sighs> Scart. Scuzzy. Wide scuzzy all the way. It's quite nice. It's switched, so you can put it in line and then break the link. Yeah, I know, I know. It's for testing. I've seen other ones for testing though that are. Um... Can't remember what brand it was. Anyway. Okay, so I think we are. This may solder down on both sides. Yes, we've got to solder at both sides of the board, which is a pain. So it's all manual, where the URFL connector isn't.
Now, I think though, okay, so the, here's an interesting thing. Okay, okay, except this, this doesn't fit. It, it doesn't fit, but the, this board from seed has both connectors and there's no switch. They're both just connected. They're both on. You, you just plug one in and it, it just degrades. Like it's, it's, it's literally got both without a switch. Whoa, what's going on? Okay, is that better? Yeah, that was really weird. Sorry about that. When I switched back, it turned on the, the main microphone. Sorry about that. I don't know why. So they have both on there without a switch. What would the price difference be? What, if I had both? Oh, ne negligible. The, the issue is I can't fit both. Not the way they've done it. They've just got them right next to each other. I'd have to, again, I, I'd have to make the shape quite different to fit them in. Um, like I, I'd have to make the board much longer. I should probably go the other way. I'd probably have to do something like this. Um, so something like that, but you know, it, again, it's going to be potentially hard to get. Hey Paul, if you can fit both pads, populate the URL and leave the SMA for the user to install if they want it. Right, I could do that too. I could provide it separately and they could just solder it on. I, I, I would do that as long as one of them is on the board and populated. I don't want to do a coil wire though. I'm not shipping my boards with a coil, coil wire on it. Yeah, I, I, I'm. This, yeah, I'm not doing that. Um, yeah, I prefer not. Like Rob's idea. What was Rob's idea? If you can hit both. Yeah, right. As long as it ships with an antenna connector on there, I, I, I would be okay shipping the. They look different. Let me just, I need to check. These connectors look a bit different. Um, I need to open this. Get one of these out. Oop. <laughs> okay, too many. Um, Oh, no, they're right. They're the same. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's going to have to be a, a two millimeter PCB, which really sucks. Um, it keeps the entire space required very small if someone wants to try to use it. Yep. Populate the RFL and leave the pads for SMA. Right. So, if I, yeah, and if I ship the SMA connector with it and they can solder it on, I'll have to do a guide on how to solder it. Okay, I can do that. I'd say most people would want to use a plastic antenna, whatever their real name is. I don't know what that is. Um, no, it's pretty flush. Hang on. Like it, it's, yeah, it's pretty flush underneath. So if it was stacked, Like it would be kind of like that. 
But if I was going to do them next to each other, it would hang over more. So yeah, it would be. Or if you're sticking it on like something like this, where they're next to each other, then it's not a problem. A long antenna like the ones that came with the E5 Div Kit. Oh, you mean, so this one that came with it. I mean, that, that's as wide as my board, almost. So that's going to, yeah. Catch you later, Dave. Have a good night. I've used the stick-on patch antennas for home testing. No idea what the range is. You couldn't pick and place the SMA connector. No, it's sideways, and, and I wouldn't. You couldn't pick and place it anyway. Like it, it attaches sideways onto the board, and it's going to be hand soldered both sides. It's not. There's no pin and paste option. There's no pins. There's no holes for it. Okay, so let's look at doing. Okay, so we should look at doing both. Okay, I'm going to do. Let's. Wow, an hour and forty six. And I maybe resolved something here. Maybe. Okay, so. Yeah. Hmm. End fed long wire with a balance and earth. Chat wins again. Woohoo! Where did I get the? They're from Seed. Um, the Laura E5 Mini, and the the Grove version of it. Of the, I don't know what this one's called. The Grove board. I, got, I bought them from Seed ages ago, like forever ago. Um, okay. So the only issue here is going to be that. Um, I'm going to have to completely change my stack up, but that's okay. Um, Geek says both wins by overwhelming indecision. <laughs> Got to love some indecision. Right, I probably... Um, that's a really good point. I should... I just dropped... No, I don't want to edit it. Go away, idiot. Uh, I just dropped that on there. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is copy that, close, go to the schematic. Um, oh, that's the SMA. Um, That's interesting. It thinks that's it. What? Okay, I'll change their names later. Um, I don't know if this is gonna like me doing this. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, What is going on? Schematic first. No, schematic last. Um, oh, that's not connected. Right, that's weird. What's going on here? Okay. Mark Olson says I'm blue double D. Good song. Why are they, why is that not, let's see three, interesting. 
Okay, I don't know what's going on there. I'll have to redo this anyway. So this is going to be something ugly like that. Um, I don't even know if it's, it's worth even trying to match this then. Um, it's probably not even worth trying to match it. Yeah, yeah, I'll move them in a second. Go away. Yeah. Oh, type of bus is a bus. Bus is bus. What? Um, would you want zero ohm link to choose which? No, I don't want. It's going to be both connected at the same time. 100% will not put a zero ohm link on there for people to switch. That, sorry, you, you probably... You weren't here for that, Rob, at the start. Um, that's uh, not not something that I want to do because people they'll just wreck the boards trying to do it. Controlled impedance solder jumper. Yeah, no. I've seen SMA connectors on eBay that... Antennas on eBay that connect to the board with a UFL connector. What? Isn't that then a UFL antenna? Joshua Collar says, I see RF matching as the boring part of RF. What do you think about RF matching? I hate it. It's the boring part of RF. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's, it's really a, uh, it's a pain, total pain in the backside. Dis dislike it immensely. with a passion. Come on. With a passion. Hate it, hate it, hate it. It's not where the Mark magic Anderson happens. says it's not boring. It's just so much work to get correct. Yep, yep. And it's it's just, it's frustrating. Just frustrating. Beak says add a zero ohm resistor from ground to ground connecting nothing just to keep people happy. <laughs> But they'll got to move it and nothing's going to happen. Oops, I scratched my... I hope I didn't make any noise then. Um, okay, so... What time is it? I need to go turn the, um, the heater on so I can warm up my production line. Okay, so if I do this... Um, okay, time to... You can go away now. I don't need you. And... Um, you can go to there. Okay. Um, so it's going to be something like that, which is really god awful. Okay, I'm going to stop in the poll. 60%. For SMA, fifty-nine to forty, fifty-seven votes. How are we going to do that? We're not going to do the RF switching. They're both going to be connected, and you won't RF switch it. And the Nathaniel Bell says, "What Laura module are you using?" Uh, using the E5 from Seed. So yeah, the, the UFL connector will come populated and I will ship the SMA connector. Look, I might solder them on or I might just ship them separately. Um, and that'll obviously, I've got this cap all the way over here. Uh, that'll obviously degrade the RF a little bit, but not tremendously. But I, yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna put any switching option on. There's no easy switching option. 
Um, ten watt? No, that's not enough. You need much higher than ten watt to be able to handle all the reflection heat. Ten watts, yeah. Thousand watt. So I've had to do a modified version of this footprint, by the way, which I hope will still work to get it to fit inside the, um, the width of my shields. The, the pads were all the way out to here, which is a bit of a problem. Not really, no. Um, they, they, well, they, a, a tiny bit. They cost me $8, each just, just over $8 each. My money dot gift. You could cut the unused trace to improve performance. Well, you could, but I don't want people to do that. I don't, I don't yeah, I don't, don't like the cutting the trace thing. But um, yes, you could. The module is castellated. Or, no, or not defined castellated. <laughs> it, it's, it's castellated, it's a PCB. It's, um, but the footprint requirement for it their, their footprint for it is uh, considerably bigger than this. Um, so it's going to be an interesting soldering job. Now, it's castellated pads is correct. They're, they're castellated, but um, there's going to be very little edge for it, but that's okay. So I really wanted to get the JST connector on there. Well, it depends where you cut it. Like if you if you manage if you're able to cut the trace right there, which would be very difficult to do, then not much. Hey Graham, how soon can I buy one? <laughs> uh, uh, okay, yep. Yeah, I'm just going to go pick and place them right now. No. Um, So, stemmer or battery? And please don't tell me both. It's <laughs> like 50-50. If you're at the UFL 90 degrees and put it between your logo and the SMA. Um, Mark Olson says both. No, because then you, you can't get your fingers inside to put the connector on and off. It's got to be near the edge of the board. That looks massive, but the board is tiny. Like that space to get the connector on and off between the module, which is very tall. Um, the module is like it's a, it's a tall module because it's a module on a PCB. Joshua like it's Tallel a, says your tiny series has a JSTPH connector on the bottom, so let's go Stemma. It does, but it, it's, yeah, it, it's, sure. I know it does. It makes the height higher. <laughs> the Stemma QT connector, um, these connectors, Oops, these connectors here for I2C for modules needs to be a pentagon shape. What? Yeah, so with, with the height of the module and the height of the SMA connector, trying to get inside there to plug in and pull off a UFL is going to be too difficult. So the board is very, very small. Very, very small. Um, to give you an idea of how small in real life. Big says what is stammer. That's how big the board is. <laughs> I mean that that's doesn't really help relative wise. <laughs> it actually makes no sense at all. Uh, yeah, Spyfun call it a quick connector. Um, but uh, it's a uh, Adafruit call it a Stemma QT connector. It's a Stemma QT as opposed to Stemma, which is a bigger one. Um, but they're all the same thing. Um, okay, so we can do... 
<laughs> it was massive on there. Right. You do a micro blade. What's if we did um getting a bit tight? What if we could fit a micro blade connector on there? Okay, anyway, it doesn't matter. Does it rename um Yeah, but it's a very common um a very common connector now for modules like ev everyone's making modules now that have them on there for doing I2C based stuff, including myself. Two stemmer on it. Two. I don't know if it needs two. What do you need two for? Can you move the E5 to the left? Yeah, I can. I've, I've got room to move it to the left now. Um, sure. Ah. I mean, I'm not, and I, like I'm, I'm guessing right now in terms of my matching, uh, my impedance on the traces. You know, um, yes, yes. Noxy says if E5 moves left, could you not fit a vertical stemma connector then a JST connector on the end of the board? Um, I don't think so. JST pH connector is quite big. Right. Um, plus, it needs the cap. I mean, that's. Um, I mean, I can move the cap, but that's still. Beak says, a "Is it I two C or I squared C?" Same. It's I squared C, but it's quicker to say I two C. I'm not, I, could, I could maybe fit both in. Um, the problem is, the reason I didn't really want to do that though is then I've got wires hanging off here that sit over the antenna area of the ESP32. That is a vertical stemmer. That's a vertical one. So that's the problem with that. So, um, yeah, that's not, I mean, I can get this closer. But anyway, it's, it's, this is just semantics really. Yeah, this did the, the tiny Pico talk or talks to this. Yes, yes. Via, it does it via UART. Um, look, I can fit that on. Yeah, it works in AT mode. Yeah, it ships with AT firmware on there. You still going? I went to the shops, drove to the lab, opened YouTube. And I'm, I'm still, I'm still here. I am. It's only been two hours, and um, but we have a solution. It's, it's a nasty one. We're going to put two connectors. I'm going to populate the URL 
but probably not populate the Joshua SMA. Joshua Collins says, when is RP2040 joining the party? I don't know. Uh, it's, it's not. I've got no desire to use one. It doesn't give me anything that I can't do with any other microcontrollers I'm using. Or it gives me less. Um, so I'm going to, and I'm not even going to give them a switch, John. It's just going to be both of them connected. And I'll ship the, um, the SMA connector separately and people can solder it on if they want to. Which is interesting. Do, does that have the back pads? I don't know if this connector's got the back pads on it. Oh, it does. Okay. Whew, lucky. Um, two antennas working at the same time. Yep. Yeah, if you if you remove the AT firmware on there, you can't get it back on. Ooh, Michael might have found the firmware. Interesting. Okay. I mean, I can squeeze this up more if I have to. Um, I can fit that on. So one stemmer, two microcontrollers, uses a lot of energy. It uses what it uses. Um, yeah. Any idea with what, Dr. Nick? Hmm. Energy use. Don't know. Have don't have one going yet. Couldn't wouldn't know how to measure it. Joshua Collar says, "Remember to look out to how much power this module needs." Why do I need to, why would I care about how much power the module needs? Sorry. Um, what, how, how does that affect anything? It's got like all the power it needs. Okay, so I'd probably go like that. Put it on that side. Um, hmm. So, what else is this going to need? I do a MOSFET controlled BCC for the board. Why? For the actual law board, why do we want that? There's an LED on here that I might do with a jumper, but I'm not, I haven't decided. Um, could be pink, I guess. Um, Turning that off to save power. It says care about the power this needs to fit in my 100 microamp power budget. Uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. So forget it, Quixotic Geek. The ESP32 won't fit in your 100 microamp power budget. Tall power would allow you to power it down when not in use. Sure, but it wouldn't be powering down the ESP32 which I would assume is going to cost more in power than this will. So, yeah. Um,
Sure. Well, well, it might fit in your budget, but then, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, catch you later, Johan. Have a good sleep. I mean, I, I could put power switch on here, but the problem with doing a power switch is if you put the ESP32 into deep sleep, you're going to have to pin hold it to keep the power if you want to then have the LoRa board go into sleep. Um, I'd be better off sticking, instead of a FET, I'd, be, I'd, I'd stick an LDO on here. Ugh. Hmm. Yeah, I was I was kidding about the power requirements. Um, quick study geek, like it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I can't really use an LDO, like an LDO is going to be more efficient for me, but and easier, but um, I can't really do an LDO. Uh, let me tell you, it's. Uh, I wonder what mine is. How much my uh, my net worth on helium is now? Did you see it, it halved, Mike, last week? It. It. Um, what are we up to now? Oh, okay, it's gone up a tiny little bit. <laughs> wow, Jesus. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Um, the price completely tanked. There's no impedance for the RF pin. It's 50. It's 50 ohms. The pin on the module is 50 ohms. So matching to 50 is... Um, is definitely uh, way easier than doing any of the... Um, the stuff I'm going to do on the ESP32 S3. Uh, plus the rest of the crypto down the drain. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not... I'll, I'll, this is not final. This is not final at all. Um, and I'd actually rather have this over here somewhere, to be honest. Joshua Collar says, yeah, I thought of that. Um, Anyway, okay, so it's going to be something like this. I need to work out what I'm going to do with the power control. What's the typical use case? If out in the field, powered off battery for telemetry data and then the ability to display the Pico and lower board seems essential. Well, you could, yeah, okay, but you can't, I can't force the lower board to go into sleep or to shut down power when the tiny Pico goes into deep sleep because I don't have anything broken out 
on any of those boards that you can detect when the board goes into deep sleep. So you'd have to control that yourself via an I.O. that then you know, shuts down a FET or something on the board, on the LoRa board, on the shield, which is fine, except you need to then be able, you have to hold that pin during deep sleep. So I need to pick a pin that can be held and then people have to remember to do that to shut down power. Right, I mean, a, 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 well, hmm. it depends if you want to have Wi-Fi as well or not, Mark, but sure. Have the lower be off and turn it on when needed. Um, yeah. Can do that as well can do that. So we do a, um, a P-type FET. Um, I'm just trying to think. Da -da -da -da. I would go... Uh, module has a sleep mode. Maybe. Yeah, a load switch adds a stack of extra components. Uh, a load switch is going to, you know, is going to require, you know, four or five other passives to go with it. Um, Add one on the SMA is single sided. Yes, that is single sided. These are double sided. Plus the, uh, what RTC? What? Uh, I'm not putting an RTC on here. I've, I've got RTC chips, but I'm, um, yeah. Um, Hmm. Oh right, I can't get or can't get more of those at the moment. I've got I've got quite a few of them. I've got more of those than I've got modules, but I, I'm not going to stick an RTC on here. If you want logging, you use the module. Sticking that just an RTC chip itself on here isn't going to give you any benefit. Super chat. Ooh. Oh wow, Johnny, sixty next next week, next stream. Happy birthday for next week, in case we all forget. I hope we don't forget. Please donate, or well, next Monday, but yeah, you'll be 60. Okay, you heard it here, everyone. Happy birthday to Johnny for Monday, yay. Um, So PTP links that are plugged into power, building in devices on battery power. Yeah, but okay, uh, you got to look at what I'm building here. Like th this is a shield for a tiny Pico, not a standalone product. If this was a standalone product, I wouldn't be matching it with an ESP32. Like this is just a shield to be able to connect it to boards that people already have for their projects. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be. Like my, my plan always was to do two LoRa boards. Was one was a shield, and the other one was going to be a standalone thing. And as a standalone thing, I, uh, yeah, I'll most likely put something super low power on there as the the main MCU. And I put a whole bunch of other stuff on there, like I'd, 
yeah, anyway. Like it would be a bigger board and, you know, and I could put an RTC, I could put a, an SD card on there for logging, it, you know, stick a, a, an RP2040 on there, I guess, or, or something, even an AT Tiny. Um, yeah, this is just to be able to grab a board and stick it in, stick it into a, a, a Tiny Pico or Tiny S2, S3 and be able to use LoRa. Um, It's just not a great match for ultra low power, right? But the sure. Had a match with the shields also in it. That's my nano, my tiny Pico nano doesn't have a shield. Is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about my nano S3, which I have yet to think about putting into production? That's my nano S3. For those, they will need a custom shield. I'm gonna to have to go to China and get a custom shield made. Um, yeah, for sure, this is for tinkering, Mark. It's for tinkering with Laura. It's, you know, I wouldn't expect people would be deploying anything with this. Um, definitely times at a high power MCU, like Thurston Laura makes sense. The commercial climate, these bit devices on big batteries with solar panels. And the one other Laura. Oh, interesting. Okay. I don't use Laura for anything right now, um, but I've always been interested in the technology, but never found, it, never had a use for it. If I had Laura devices lying around that I could plug, that I could connect up to my boards, I'd maybe look at using it for something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> right. Um, I mean, I would always, you know, want to be choosing Wi-Fi over LoRa for me because I don't do anything that's long range. But, you know, other people do. And so, and I still like to play with it. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm going to I'm not going to try to finish this on stream, but I think this is the this is what we're going to do. Oh, what is it good for? It's for for short bursts of data for like sensors and all sorts of stuff for long distance, for low power and long distance. Right. I mean, an ideal board would be, would have you know a GSM would have a, a, a GPS of some type <laughs> and LoRa. And an MCU, and there wouldn't be any Wi-Fi or Bluetooth at all on it. Um, squirrel counters in the field, yes, for John. <laughs> um, and and rabbit holes for me. Okay. I'm still unsure of the battery connector, but. Uh, is the bat that's going to have to feed in to the the main board, and then I'm going to have to switch power at this side. So um, yeah, the, the power regulation side needs to live here, unfortunately. So anyway, I need to work all this out. But the low power Wi-Fi, it's really awesome. Fascinating. I, I don't think the words low power and Wi Fi fit in the same sentence, but I know what you mean. Lower power. Like the, the, the people are working on lower power Wi Fi, but it's still super high power compared to um, other technologies. But it's about bandwidth, right? You know, you, like the type of bandwidth you can get from Wi Fi, you just can't get for, um, for other things. You know, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, it's actually cooled down. It's quite cold in here now. I'm feeling quite cold, and I need another coffee. And it's it's 18 degrees in here now. Well, it's not dropped too much. I do have to go turn the um, everything on downstairs. So I bought a new ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, I let my patrons know the other day. I caved, and I bought a good 
small one, a, a three liter, but a good, a, a new Sonic Clean. Um, and it's, it's a heated three liter ultrasonic cleaner and it cleans my boards so much better. Hey Yuz, so much better than that cheap $100 one <laughs> I, uh, I bought um, months back. So um, there's no home power monitoring stuff instead of Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Mark Olson says good morning to us. Yay. Yeah, post has, post has been faster, which has been great. Um, yeah. Four of you, what the hell, I'm paying. What? Oh, right, four went to the conference, okay. Yeah, Mark was just at the Nordic conference. Johnny, you're paying for that out of your birthday money. Um, yeah, I'm going to wrap up soon. Um, we've got a plan now for the law board. Um, so I will probably not get a chance to finish this off and route it properly for another couple of days yet. I have to get into production. Um, I want to get my data logger, my RTC logger boards, my first run of those done. Um, I did get the... Um, I did a... Uh, a layout for it. Oh, where is it? Um, put, put packaging, sh sh shields, RTC logger. So, um, yeah, I did a pinout diagram for it yesterday or last night. Um, and so I need to get cards printed for that. Um, I think I've got everything on here. I just need to double check, triple check it. I'll send it off to my um, my copy editor, which is Mike, and get him to look over it. Oh, happy birthday for August for the for last month, wagon loads. Oh, hello, Mike. So yeah, I'm going to. Um, so yeah, I want I want to just get this launched the RTC logging board, get it out there. I know that uh, a couple of people, a couple, I don't know how many, but at least a couple of people that are waiting for it. Um, and um, yours is soon, right? 51. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not 51. And mine is coming up. No Alan bubble Nelson stick. says good night to you all. Catch you later, Alan. Have a good sleep. And same to you, Embedded Hobbyist. Catch you later. You've not even opened it. <gasps> Christopher. Naughty boy. No, no, it's, that's fine. You don't have to. You need another room for all of your unexpected maker gear. Do you have a room in the house dedicated for it? Um, I'm thinking of taking all of the, for the future, taking on my shields, removing all of the pin numbering off the headers on the board. You got it. Yeah, Yaz has got a room in her house, but not for my stuff. Um, like on all of my boards, I have to put different, you know, the pins for the different things. It's got its own shelf. No, you need a room. For the amount of stuff you've bought, you definitely need a room, I think. A Maltese shelf. No, it's a Lego room at the moment, Mark. It's full of Lego. She'll get Yaz to take a photo for you. Yazi, Mark and Emma just build lots of Lego as well. They've got Lego cabinets full of Lego everywhere. Um, anyway, I was saying, I think I'm going to get rid of the numbers for the headers from now on on all of my shields. Just not put them on there because they're all different. It's a Lego house. Why get rid of the numbers? Because they're, they're different, like the as you can see. Like the ones I put on here right now for the Tiny S3. But not everyone's going to plug them into a Tiny S3. So if you plug that on top of a Tiny Pico, those, those numbers are wrong. They're not the right I.O. numbers. Replace them with letters. 
<laughs> D1, D2, A1, A0. Just have nothing there. I, I don't know. Like, I, like I'll leave the labels for 3 volt, 5 volt, battery, ground, and everything else. Reset. Just the I.O. numbers. Okay. I will do that, Yuz. Um, yeah. So I'm excited to get that built and validated and out. Um, although I need to come up with some type of testing firmware for it. Use emojis. Yeah, I, I don't think DLC can print emojis reliably enough unless I pay their big money for their um, expensive new printing service. Now, we haven't referred the old office yet, but we Yaz has vacuumed the floor, <laughs> so that's good. Uh, I even vacuumed the floor in here, not that you can tell. Um, yeah, oh God, there's nothing else really to tell. I, I don't have... I did end up making more the, the, the testing boards for the tiny S3, the, the ones I worked on last week. So I've got one working board and then three, three boards to, to go on the v and I haven't, hey Alan, I haven't put pigtails on them yet, but I didn't build, I haven't built the other two boards, the Pro S3 and the Feather S3 yet. I've just been doing production. So uh, I will get to those eventually. How many parts did she find in the Hoover? Not many, I don't think. But Keen started using my charm high the other day and parts everywhere. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he's <laughs> what a disaster. How's the RF matching going? I, I, ha I haven't, as I said, I've got the boards ready. I've got the boards ready for the, at least for the Tiny S3. I'm gonna start with the Tiny S3 because they're the ones that I had the data from the, um, the pre-cert. So I wanna replicate the issue and then fix the issue and that way I'm confident that it's um, good, good. Uh, have the alarm pin connected to an interrupt on the Tiny Pico? It does. So the um, interrupt pin, oh, whoops. So there's an interrupt pin which is on here. So it's on the Tiny Pico, it's pin four or nine on the Tiny S2 one on the Tiny S3. And then there is also this clock pin, which is on number two. Now that, that can be for a clock output, or you can actually make this a second interrupt. So yeah, you've got control of both. And these both these pins here are RTC IO pins. So if the ESP32 is in deep sleep, these pins can wake it if that's what you've programmed to wake it from deep sleep if the alarm goes off. So yes, you can do that. And there's also a jumper on the back of the board, uh, two jumpers on the back of the board. So you can disable the clock if you want to free up IO, this IO here, 14. Um, not Yeah. And then there's also one for the EVI pin, which is a not broken out, but it's a controllable pin that you can disconnect off the RTC if you want to. So yeah, that control is there. Yeah, he took the, it wasn't quite 1983 when he got it, Yuz, but yeah. And he's only just started using it and he's had lots of uh, parts flying out of the feeders. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah. Okay, I am going to get on with my day, which is going to start with a, another cup of coffee and something to eat, and then go warm up the pick and place machine. And I need to fix this, I need to take my knife to the, this adapter for the panels. Oh no, it was the, sorry, the jumper is for the interrupt. You can, there's a jumper for the interrupt 
on the back, so which is it's bridged, but you can cut it, the trace, if you want to free up the interrupt if you're not using it. And there's also a jumper for the clock, which is by default is not connected. So you need to bridge that if you want to use the clock pin. Otherwise, it frees up the I.O. So, yep. Um, yeah. Hopefully this will work. If not, that'll be annoying. Uh, that mic looks like it's pinched to your nipple. It's not, but it's close. My nipple's just there, so sorry. Yep, it's not pinched the nipple. That would really hurt. So guys, use lower of in-house home automation stuff. There's no reason why you can't use lower for it. It's um easier than not easier. It's 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 yo link. Okay, really? I go to the website and just get bombarded with uh, pop-ups to close. Find your perfect product. Demonetized because I touched my nipple. <laughs> what? Yeah. Third and matter are the future of home automation, especially now matter has reached version one. Eh, eh. Deke says, eh. can you use an RTC and lower board at the same time with a tiny Pico? Uh, we, yes, yes. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm gonna have to check the, all the pins to make sure that there are none conflicting, but I can probably do that. Um, I, yeah, I don't know yet. Um, we'll see. There's a lot of IO being used on the, um, the logging shield. So, uh, where'd that go? Yeah, there's a lot of I.O. being used here. So I've really only got, I mean, I've got some free. Um, but I've got to check whether, I, get, I, I need two of them for the UART. And I'm going to need one of them for some type of power control if we're doing that. And... Hmm. Possibly. I'll say possibly. And doing Zigbee board a couple of streams ago, have a tiny IoT board. But what do you mean by a tiny IoT board? Like, so a Zigbee board and a Matter thread board would just be a tiny H2 board, right? Like when the H2 chip comes out, then I put a, a H2, ESP32 H2 on there, and that's my tiny IoT board, you know what I mean? Like, define IoT board, like my tiny Pico is an IoT board, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. It's not all of the standards, but still. Can the LoRa board wake up the ESP board? No. Um, I don't know how you'd even do that or why you'd want to do that. Um, the lower board's communicating by UART. Um, I wouldn't even... Matter is a new standard that all the big players have come in to standardise on a new it's just a, a reinvention of what's already there, but under a new 
thing that everyone's going to conform to. Um, so they, they've standardized everything by adding another standard. <laughs> but um, it's the first time that all of the, the major players of um, at least for it home automation. The key to the SNI, it stands for security. <laughs> that is funny. That is really funny. Um, it's, it's a standard for communicating for things like home automation and stuff like that, right? It's a, um, it's, it's, it's not a protocol, like it works with, oh, okay, someone's already written that. So it works, it's, it's protocol kind of independent, like it'll work over Ethernet, Wi-Fi, yet or whatever. Um, but it's a, well, it's, it's a, a, a protocol that sits on top of, and but it's a way of standardizing. So like, you know, right now you've got your, you know, home kit devices, which use completely different proprietary protocols than other devices and stuff. So yeah, this is a way of a, an ecosystem where everything's going to be compatible and inter, inter what's the word? Interoperable, interoperable, something like that. What I'm going to look. Oh, what's the logo doing? It's broken. Hmm. Interoperable. Yeah, it's just hard to say. Uh oh. Look here will eventually conform as well, I would think. Um, everyone will, I guess. <laughs> Interoperable meaning it mostly won't work for a long time, sure. Yeah, I mean, everyone everyone is on board with it. Okay, it, it all the all the big players are in, um, and the microcontroller people are on board. Um, so yeah, it's 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 definitely good that it's happening, but it's going to take a while, still. Um, you can use it as a heater to warm the place. You could uh, pull it apart and, and get 13 cents for all the gold inside it. Play frisbee, yep. <laughs> Man, the Lego. Uh, the elevator pitch. One protocol will connect to compatible devices and systems with one another. Smart home devices should be secure, reliable. Yeah. I thought the, uh, the elevator pitch was one ring to rule them all and in the dark bind them. Is everyone here watching Lord of the Rings and um, Game of Thrones? I'm really enjoying Lord of the Rings. Rings of Power, I gotta say. I'm, um, I'm enjoying it more than Game of Thrones. House of Dragons, I have to say. Um, so far. So, uh, yeah, no spoilers though. Andre wants a Lego room. Well, you can make a Lego, you can have a Lego room. You just buy a bunch of Lego and make it and put it in the room, and then you've got a Lego room. Um, Yeah, has anyone else been watching it? I don't think anyone cares. Ah, Bruce, yes. Okay, yay. <laughs> How's the dragons that we just talked to her? That's very funny. A room made of Lego. Yeah, I don't think a room made of Lego. You don't want to do that. Um, yeah, 
160,000 bricks. Oh my god, I read I've made them. Okay, right, okay. Ooh, Lego Saturn V, nice. What? There's a new quantum leap? No. Is there a new quantum leap? <coughs> Excuse me. I didn't know they were remaking it. Was it bad, was it? Oh, don't tell me that. No, we wrote bad. It was bad. The previous Lord of the Rings series? What? You mean the previous Game of Thrones series? John? This is the first Lord of the Rings series. Or, or you meant the movies. Did you mean the movies? Um... Yeah, okay, sorry, the movies, yeah. It's, um... Production quality-wise, it's much better than I thought it was going to be, I have to say. Uh, I'm enjoying it so far. And, um... Yeah. And I'm enjoying the Games of Thrones stuff as well, but it's, it's... It's just opportunity for more of the same. Yes, watched all the Westworld. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, they can't hit as hard as the movies, I don't think. Not with um, television. It's got to be a bit shinier, less gritty, I think, maybe. But I think so far, it's good. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm just procrastinating now, but I need, I need to get going. I need to get making, making stuff. Um, oh, my stuff shipped. My stuff shipped. I should, I, yep, yeah, I meant to say that at the start of the stream. My uh, stencil printer and conveyors and loaders, stacker and unstacker, destacker. It's um, Silicon Valley finished, the TV series. It had it. It's had it end. It, it's over. It was a great ending. I loved it. No, it can't. You already asked that. Wagon loads. The uh, lawyer board can't wake up a tiny pico from deep sleep. No. Um, yeah, my stuff's on the way. It's um, well, at least it's at the forwarder. I don't know if it's on a ship yet, but. Um, Soon, I'll have the rest of my line coming, except for an oven. I haven't decided on an oven yet, still. Um, I guess you didn't know I'm more of an Anna fanboy now than... Oh, wow. Really? No way. Well, you, you can't get SM32s, so you can't really be a fanboy. Oh, Mr. Mark, hello. Okay, bye, everyone. Have a great... <laughs> it's funny, Johnny. Have a great... Uh, week and I'll catch you all next week um, yeah <laughs> bye <laughs> Mark you're a liar liar Bruce liar have a great day afternoon evening all thanks Bruce Mark liar liar pants on fire <laughs> okay bye everyone <laughs> take care